Welcome back, everyone, to another One Take. Today, it's the Republic, and my goodness, am I excited for this one. This is easily one of the best Tier 10 battleships. It really is amazing for both battleship players and cruiser players. This one, I think, is by far the most enjoyable for the most amount of people. And that really comes down to the reload on these guns. It's just insane to have a 20, 21 second reload on 431 millimeter guns, which means we're overmatching 30 millimeters. And of course, the dispersion is pretty good on this ship. As you can see the upgrades, it's a standard battleship build with the addition of speed boost mods, since we do want to take advantage of the extra little bit of speed we can get out of that upgrade. For the commander, Adrenaline Rush and uh, Grease the Gears can be even better improved versions if you have the special commander here. I of course also want to take Gun Feeder, since Republic HE is actually pretty solid. It's decent fire chance at 48%, does okay damage as well. So against battleships and some cruisers who bounce our shells, HE can be a viable strategy, but the armor piercing is truly amazing on this ship. So. Let's see what we're gonna get today. Two games as usual, and they're just gonna be live. No pre-recordings here. I'm gonna go through and show you how I like to play the Republic and respond to different situations in game. As far as the ship though, the dispersion is the weirdest thing. It's incredibly good vertically, but horizontally it's atrocious. So it's a ship that punishes broadsides extremely well. And with these reasonably fast shells, it's not too hard to do that out to long ranges. So, of course, we have around 26 kilometers of range, which is more than enough for today's meta. And I don't recommend the legendary mod since it reduces your range down to 20 kilometers or so for only a slight improvement in reload. Looks like we got decent matchmaker. Um, getting some tier eights in there, which should be fun to pick on. Unfortunately, we're facing a Nakamov. Uh, something the Republic should be relatively good at is AA, and it really isn't, but that's what uh, that's what some of the stats might lead you to believe. It's really quite poor, but it's a little bit better than ships like Yamato, for example. It's not going to stop the Nakamov strikes, though, that's for sure. So we have to be careful. We do want to play with our teammates, and since we're spawning on a flank, I think we're going to go flank. Republic is a ship that's so good in almost every situation. As long as you're not getting overwhelmed by 32mm overmatch or HE that's going to pen 32mm, you're going to do just fine. With this build, of course, we have 14 kilometers of concealment, and that's more than enough for us to get close into the enemy and get some decent salvos off. We, of course, are going to notice that all these cruisers can be overmatched by us, which is very, very nice, and some of these battleships take a ton of damage as well. The Z10 we can actually also overmatch. The Yukikaze is not loaded in yet or something, so something to keep in mind in a lot of these games, especially at tier 10, is you don't want to go alone most of the time, especially when there's a carrier in the game. We see that, uh, yeah, all right, I'm going to give up this flank already. That's uh, a bit of a crazy move considering I'm always, always talking about go to the cap you spawned at. The real problem here is there's a CV, and we only have two people here to support us. And one of those people seemingly isn't even logged in yet. So yeah, there's no point in throwing away HP in this situation. We can get some excellent cross shots in, so it's not like I'm gonna leave this flank at all. I'm just gonna get myself into a position where I can kite away. Uh, the Yamato's here, so we do have to be careful since the overmatch will hurt a lot. But uh, yeah, let's take a look. That horizontal dispersion, as you can see, it's kind of ridiculous how good the vertical dispersion is or how bad the horizontal is. And it's gonna drop short because he turned out just slightly. In fact, if this Yamato is going to stay here, we're not gonna get any better shots. I might actually swap over to HG next salvo. We'll see. He's kiting away. I'll shoot, I'll shoot an HE salvo or two, just so, just so you guys can see what it's like. At these long ranges, um, well that looks like a bit of a lock-on bug or something, but at these long ranges, the AP does reasonably well still, but the HE, it can hurt. 
it can hurt a lot. And these guys are basically stationary, so I'm just going to shoot right at them. And you'll notice I'm trying not to give up this flank entirely. I'm in a position so that I can get away. But even when I'm going to run away, I'm going to run this way. I don't want to run to my team. The whole point is that we want to keep our angles open. Hopefully creating crossfires. That's 6k out of HE salvo. Pretty good. I think he's going to turn in. That's why I shot where I did. And nobody's shooting at us yet. Um, but once we start to see the Yamato targeting us, we're going to use our speed boost. And this will let us speed juke just a little bit. I do have propulsion mod, so hopefully we're going to be able to get out from underneath his shells here. Maybe not, though. He did predict us to go forward, so fair enough. Good salvo. It dropped short, though. But this whole speed juking is something you can definitely take advantage of in a ship like the Republic. It doesn't do it as well as a Borgon, for example, but still not bad. And if you're wondering why I'm targeting this Yamato so heavily, it's simply because he overmatches me. I can angle to a Montana all day. Cleveland is either going to shatter, or he's not really going to get that many fires if he's taking IFHE. And in this open map, it's really tough for him. So I'm not too worried. The Flandra, really not worried about him as well. So I'm just taking my time trying to focus out the Yamato. He's out of range though, so not a big deal. We'll switch over to the Flandra. And you'll notice I'm constantly trying to engage someone on the flank while staying angled to the bulk of the enemy team. There we go. Some more bounces. Good stuff. And it's a slow start. Very slow start. But that's the thing, is this is their strong flank. Also, notice his engine's out. So if we see him rep that, we can swap over to the HE and get some easy fires quite quickly. There's a smoke forming right here. So that's probably... Uh, what would that be? Gearing, maybe? So Torps are probably coming from here. My guess. And we're getting okay damage into this Flandre superstructure. If you don't have HE loaded and there's a battleship angled to you, just shoot armor piercing into the superstructure and it does alright damage. Not amazing, but alright. Yamato's coming back in. We see that. See the Atlantico. I might want to shoot for that. That might be a good target. Especially since we don't have too much spotting here. Ah, Monty got a decent salvo into our superstructure now. There's one set of torps, so the other one might be coming here. Gotta be a little careful of that. Alright, we'll say hello to the Atlantico real quick. You know, we're losing some HP. Yeah, there's that overmatch. So we're starting to lose HP, so we start to just kite away just a little bit further, right? Just a little bit. We don't have to play too aggressive here. Yep, and there's those torps. Uh, I think we're going to eat one. Maybe not? Ah, uh, we do. Unfortunate. So we're taking some pain, but this is one of the nice things about a ship like the Republic is... At low to mid HP like this, our reload gets, it's disgusting. 19 seconds. <laughs> yeah, pretty good. Our Yukikaze is playing a little too aggressive. So you notice I'm just trying to keep these guys from getting flanked, right? That's all I'm doing here is I'm just trying my very best to hold this flank. So much so I'm actually gonna even angle my turrets this way. So I'm staying angled to the Montana, I'm staying angled to the Torps that might be coming from this gearing, the Flandre, the Yamato. Like, I'm really, really trying to stay angled here. So now it really comes down to killing this Cleveland, which should be easy for a ship like Republic, but, well, I mean, it's a, it's a light cruiser in open water and he's not dodging. So we're doing okay damage right now, but we do have to be a little careful because he could easily burn us out. I, I know it sounds crazy, but uh, stuff like that happens where there's no damage out of a salvo, right? Yeah, pretty nuts. Yeah, there's a little more. He's going to show broadside more, maybe. And it's kind of hard 
for a cruiser in these situations because the reload is just so, so good. There's no, there's no time to turn away, right? If you're caught bowing to a Republic, even if the Adrenaline Rush stuff hasn't activated yet, you're caught. Like, you can't turn away without giving flat broadside, you know? I'm gonna use another heal since we have four. We're not uh, too healthy. There we go. We did actually get ourselves a Citadel. And now, also take note of how our team is pushing, right? Our team's kind of pushing into the enemy team here. And I think instead of running this way more, I'm going to come up this way. And maybe we can get ourselves some really good cross shots in here. Especially with the Monty running away. If the Flandre is broadside, we'll shoot him. Yamato can be an excellent, excellent target for us. Oh, we bounced. Bad. Yamato could be a really solid target here. In fact, I am going to load the HE real quick. Try and light some fires on this Yami. They have to be a little worried about our guys here. I also want to take a bit of pressure off of them because they, I mean, they foolishly pushed into the enemy's spawn, right? Like, that's a great way to lose games, you know? Like a really, really solid way to lose games. Pushing into the enemy's spawn is really, really bad. I don't know why people do it. <laughs> Like, you get control of ACAP, good. Then hold position and try and can help it be, you know? Pushing here is suicide, basically. So unfortunate, but we got to make a play now. Even with B stalled, they're going to win yet. Bad dispersion, horizontal, you notice. But our fire does end up taking them out. We're already up to 96, which is pretty good. I'm gonna shoot one HE, and then I'm gonna swap to the AP. So the thing about Yamato, of course, is it's got really slow turrets. So if he wants to start shooting me, wow, 8K and a fire. See, the HE is good. If he wants to start shooting me, he's gonna have to turn his ship. And if he turns bow in, well, he's not gonna be able to shoot me for a while. <laughs> and yeah, he's turning bow in, which is totally fine. Totally fine by me. Swap back to the HE. I do have Expert Loader, which I suppose I could have gone for since we did no damage, but damage into superstructures can happen very easily as well. Yeah, see this Yami is just struggling, right? Try and get some permafires since we know he damage conned our earlier one. There we go. 10k and a fire. Really, really good. The secondaries are kind of okay on this ship, but I definitely don't recommend uh, using them. Not at all. 13, that's all right, I suppose. I'm gonna aim for his nose to try and light another fire. It's also not saturated, so we might get some huge damage in. And sure enough, we do. Now it's time to swap back to the AP. Close game, you know? Like, really, really close game. And I like that. Usually I actually really dislike this map, but this game turned out pretty good so far. Still not sure who's gonna win, but Killing this Monty can't hurt, you know? We should have control of B-cap, too. Of course, the speed boost isn't anything special, as you can see. It's only 8%, but it can help for these flanking scenarios. Little 6k hit. He's gonna ground. So we'll aim about here for him to ground. He probably dies before those shells even get there. But, uh, yeah. Speaking of shell velocity... <laughs> okay, yeah. Big, uh, big bug there. But look at this, 20 kilometers right there, 11 seconds till 20 kilometers. Pretty insane how good the shell velocity is. And now the carrier is probably gonna come for us since we're isolated. It's possible he doesn't, but I wouldn't be surprised if he does. Okay, it's not. That's really lucky. And he spotted. Nakamovs have humongous citadels. Like, it's bigger than old mo Oh my goodness, what is that dispersion? <laughs> I'm gonna blind shot. I'm using the X on the minimap here, as you can see. Wow, atrocious.
Wow, I'm getting... Come on. Alright, I'm going to use a heal. I'm going to turn away. Too bad. Alright, let's deal with the St. Louis real quick. He's going to turn out, maybe even slow down. Blame him for just a straight turn out so far. Oh, he's faster than I thought. Still got a full pad. Notice how I'm like very liberally using these uh, these heals. May as well, because we take a lot of permanent damage in a Republic, especially against Overmatch. So using heals there is great. Also, by using my damage control right away there, I'm actually kind of trying to bait them into. I'm trying to bait them into shooting me, so I can continue to shoot them. Possibly hasn't shot yet. I'm also going to start turning my turrets since here comes Nakamov. I have no need to continue to pressure here. I'm I'm a distraction. My team is doing a great job of pushing in. And we're always going to... Oh, there we go. What's up, bro? What's up, bro? That's your last drop. You better make the most of it. <laughs> oh, that's the best. Oh, can we dodge it? Oh, we can dodge this. Oh, what a last drop. Oh, that feels so good. Feels so good. He should have moved, man. Keyboards apparently don't exist, so it's fine. Let's see if we can't help this Brindisi out a little bit. Oh, man, that is just the best feeling, isn't it? What a great win. What a great win. And you'll notice I have the uh, expert marksman upgrades on my commander. And the, the turrets are still a little sluggish. They're reasonably quick, but they're still not the fastest things in the world. St. Louis might be full turning, so we want to be ready for that. And look at that horizontal dispersion, right? Like, it's just, it's the weirdest, most confusing dispersion pattern ever. That's going to force him to turn this way, right? DC is also an option. Let's see, did I leave that enough? I might not have. Considering he has speed boost up, he's pretty quick. Oh, one hit. We're actually one away from a Kraken. I don't want to jinx it, but I'd really love to get a Kraken to start things off. Alright, lead a little more. The AP is going to scare him, and we're going to finish him off. And just collect an easy 170k Kraken, huh? Okay, dude. Okay. I shouldn't have spoken. It's possible I jinxed this one. He's dead. Okay. Brindisi. Please. Please, sir. Stay doing that turn. I mean, this is still a good game, even without a Kraken. But, I mean, for a live game? Oh, man. The timing would have been so sick. For a live game, this is still a really, really solid result. I, I think Republic is definitely one of the best battleships. You don't have to worry as much about annoying RNG on your dispersion because the reload's so good. It's one of the reasons I'm not too concerned about RNG dispersion issues on cruisers and destroyers because I'm constantly shooting. A battleship, like a Vermont 40 second reload, that's, that's a great way to get tilted because you have 40 seconds to sit there and just think. Wow, if RNG had been better, that would have been a great salvo. Whereas here you have half the time. It's so nice. Oh, please tell me I get another salvo. His smoke should run out, right? Might have to blind fire. Nope. Did I lead that too much? It's possible. Oh, come on. No! Two bounces! Oh, sadness. I mean, 175 is pretty good. 175. Four kills. We flanked quite successfully, even in a CV game. I was all alone. But the important thing was I was constantly keeping an eye out for where the carrier was going, right? 
I didn't want to push too aggressive. I didn't want to cause, you know, too much attention from the carrier. And I made sure that when the carrier was coming after me, that I was in a position that I could dodge, right? That's the most important thing here is that when the carrier comes after you, um, it's very, very important that you're able to maneuver. So pretty solid result, honestly. I have done secondary builds in the past, but it's just not worth it. <laughs> Look up those videos if you want to. Secondary repub or something like that on the channel. It's it's very difficult to get games in that ship. There's a reason those games are post-commentary and uh, they're pre-recorded, obviously. So a live game, probably not going to go so well in a secondary build. Not that the ship's bad with a secondary build. The, the guns are still pretty solid, but... It's just so much better with a standard build here. Okay, second battle. What do we got? No carrier. That sticks out to me. Another mixed match with some tier 8s in there to beat up on. Hmm. So the things that worry me on the enemy team are Columbo Sap, which really hurts if he gets good RNG. Smolensk. Can't push too hard into that. Marceau is a little concerning as well. We don't want to push too hard into that. Other than that, I'm feeling pretty good about this game. One could be pretty spicy. So in this case, um, two position. one of the positions I love taking is actually right here. I have so many good games from right here in a battleship. You're able to push in so aggressively, be so close to the enemy, without risking being farmed out and killed right away. And this position gives you so many cross shots here. Because like what I'm about to do, I'm about to make this path, right? I'm about to push kind of on this angle and try and fight the guys here. But that opens me up broadside to anyone sitting here. So if you go to these, either of these squares here and just point your guns this way as a battleship, you're going to get huge damage games. Not all the time. And you're also available if the stalemate around the decap um, changes. So you're able to help with that if anything goes wrong here for your team. It's it's a really good spot. Of course, if there's a carrier, I mean, you're pretty much a free farm because AA doesn't go through islands, so the carrier just gets to pop up right on your ship and drop you. So that's the one thing to worry about. But in a game like this, I mean, if our Stalingrad goes there, oh my goodness, he's going to be feasting on everything here. And that's why it's also important to have people wide so that anybody trying to play aggressive on the one, two, three lines is caught in a crossfire. Looks like they're starting to run away from the 1, 2, 3 lines, which is also bad for their team because giving up the 1, 2, 3 lines means this kind of deadlock stalemate here uh, gets punched out because the cross shots start to come in. Smolensk is there. We're spotted. Not a big deal. I would shoot that Smolensk if he's spotted again, but eh, I'll start with the Richelieu. Now, I don't want to be sitting broadside, but Republic's reasonably tanky when broadside, too. Colin. All right. So we'll start with a speed boost. And eh, I'm getting too aggressive here. Garotorps. We noticed those going. Columbo could smack us here. No Citadel into the Puerto Rico. Feels bad. But uh, not altogether unexpected. Puerto Ricos are very difficult to Citadel. I'm going to start a heal up because I mean, we're probably going to take some pain here. He's okay. I mean, if he's going to sit broadside, sure. Another nice thing about turning this way is we get angled to all the shots from here. And we're also able to help on this Kigero when he gets spotted next. Columbo went with AP. Um, yeah, not the best uh, option there from his side. Our Freddy's pushing aggressively. He's going to take focus. So that means I could probably turn here. Wow, they have two DDs out here. Although we have a small Ansk, so I don't really need to help on that. We're looking for broadsides. I think Puerto Rico here could be a really nasty shot. 
Let's just see. This 15 kilometer window is pretty much perfect for where we want to play. Unfortunate. Did not get the uh, dispersion we needed on this guy. That's the problem with relying on AP focus ships, right? Dispersion is always there to say hello and maybe not give you the most damage. Hopefully the Talon goes in a straight line. Maybe. Nah, he turned in. Too bad. Couple overpens. Fine. So we have a Monty sitting here, right? Our Harugamo died. Oh, that's bad. Oh, we need to kill that. We have to kill that. No hit. Oh, okay. So, yeah. I mean... <laughs> Dispersion, bro. Oh, man. Dispersion's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. This, bro, this Puerto Rico is just sitting broadside. He does not care. This man is on a mission to be as broadside as possible. Please, thank you. All right, we also see Ostertorps here. So we can turn out for freight. Man, that took forever. We're also looking for... Wow, a Takao broadside? Yes, please. I don't know if that'll get over. But it's pretty good damage if it does. Nope. Too bad. So, yeah. I mean, we lost a lot of ships early here, but... They're pushing mid. It's crazy. Mid push is... I haven't seen that in a long time. Takao, does that turn? I should get him there. And now I have to turn, because the Oster probably has torps for me. If he's not torping me, Freddy. Nice. Big old hit on the Takao. See, I'm trying to catch people's broadsides, right? I think that's all I'm here for. I'm here to hit people in the broadside. Trying to finish off targets to help our team out. Yeah, see, like, we're, we're catching back up really quick. Um, and that's what I'm talking like usually this doesn't happen usually that's here usually all the Balon you know pushing kind of stuff like that it's all here on the decap whereas this game it happened in happened in C which is really weird I'm gonna try those two salvos and I'm actually gonna try and reverse here too bad I was hoping for some blind hits on the uh Do I want to reverse or do I want to go forward? I want to catch these guys broadsides. I need to support our Monty. That's what I need to do. He's really healthy, so I need to support him as best I can, which I can't really do from here. I'll only be catching the guys that are slowly pushing. I need to help him on whatever comes around this corner. So I'm not spotted also. Keep that in mind. So we don't really have to deal with the, uh, the DD. Oh, I think the Takao was slow. I didn't have much time to aim that one. I think he was slowing down. Yep. Too bad. I wanted to finish him. Because we're still down on ships, even though they're really throwing their, their ships away. They got a lot of low health stuff, so. Uh, notice we're spotted again. So we're definitely... The DD is definitely around. Gotta watch out for that. Now we just wait for spots, right? Our Stalingrad is in a bit of a tough spot. He really needs to go forward, because if these guys are allowed to push around and kill him, it's really bad. Oh, Columbo. Let's see how tanky we are on our broadside, huh? I mean, 16 shells into our broadside, only 24k. And I mean, that's not Citadels either. Like, that's the other thing. Like, that wasn't a single Citadel. <laughs> so, yeah, I took some more pain than I should have, but... They are YOLOing. What on earth is going on? What on earth is going on this game? I don't understand. What are they doing? I mean, I'm all for a good brawl, but like, hmm. All right, broadside reach loot. We want to hit him under the turrets if we can. Like, 
right, right here. Oh, it went low. That's how you Citadel French battleship. I noticed the Oster here. I don't know how recent that last spot was, but we do have to be careful with Torps from that angle. Look at our Monty go, man. Good for him. What a gamer. He's out of range. I'm going to wait for the Smolensk possibly to pop up and start farming our Monty. Although, it looks like he's already smoked. Too bad. Sometimes smoke cruisers will start farming while popping their smoke, and they'll get spotted for an instant. And that's a good time to just kill them, right? Oh, are you going to get spotted? You are. Interesting. Can I catch you? What are you doing? Uh, are you going to reverse? Or is this forward now? Okay. I'll take it. I'll take it. It's really good for us. Looks like a big old win here. Not bad. I mean, I didn't have as big a roll, but I think I did a decent job of what I had to do in this one. Reversing still. Not sure what he's going to do. Forward now. Forward turn out. Let's guess a forward turn out and turn our guns. So you notice I tend to turn my guns the instant after I start firing. And that way I'll probably be available for a salvo on the other side relatively quickly. We missed. Too bad. But a uh, pretty good result. Republic's a great ship, man. If you guys haven't grinded this line yet, I really do recommend it. I get frustrated with Republic sometimes because the dispersion can be very bad. Very, very bad. It's just that big, big games tend to happen with this ship because of the reload. The guns hit hard. I mean, you have the alpha of a Yamato, right? Like, with a 20 second reload. It's crazy. Of course, you don't have nine guns, you only have eight, but big games tend to happen with this thing. So, the line itself is pretty weird to grind, though. Low tiers are pretty awful. Tier six is fast, but I mean, the guns aren't great. The tier seven is just a meme with its 16 guns and atrocious dispersion. The tier eight Richelieu feels odd being, you know, like you just had 16 guns in bad dispersion. Now you have eight guns in bad dispersion, but they're higher caliber, but there's still only 380s at tier eight. So it's like, it's so strange. And then once you get to the Republic, it's like, okay, well, I finally have a big caliber for the tier, you know, whereas the entire way up, you're having low caliber guns. It's very strange. I think, uh, I think the Alsace is all right, but personally, I don't really enjoy playing it because it's a Borgon. It's a worse Borgon, which makes sense. It's at tier nine and the Borgon's at tier 10, but it's a little disappointing when you're used to the Borgon and then you play an Alsace. But if you don't have it, I mean, it's pretty good. 12 guns is pretty fun. And they're, you know, reasonably accurate, I guess. Oh, is our Venom about to get absolutely smashed? I think so. Yep. <laughs> All right, do I go for the cap? Nah, that's boring. I'm, I meant A. Do I go cap A or do I go after this uh, Smolensk? Just in time to overpen him. See, this is the issue is where do I aim on a Smolensk at this range? Not sure. We might have to aim low into the ground or into the water in front of them. It's one of my least favorite mechanics in this game is just how easy it is to overpen someone flat broadside at close range and do no damage. That's that's the strategy in a Smolensk, especially against a ship like Republic with insane pen and shell velocity. But angled, we can do a little something, hopefully. Not just kidding. <laughs> Those went slightly high, I guess. You, uh, 
see, that's the thing, man. Running with HE is so nice because you don't have to worry about hitting the exact waterline pixel that gives you a citadel. You can hit anywhere on a ship and you're dealing damage. Why I enjoy HE ships a lot more. They feel more consistent to me. Hmm. Too easy, huh? That's some BM. I wonder how high he placed on the scoreboard. I know I didn't place very high, but I'm not I'm not BMing in chat. Turn in? Yeah. Turn in. Alright. Oh, is turning circles worse than I remembered? Still decent damage. I mean, he got, he got our, uh, Stalin. I kind of want him to get our Smolensk yet. Wouldn't that be funny? Oh, our Smolensk is good. He's got a high caliber. Never mind. Not a bad game, but not amazing. I'm glad we got the first game in to show you just how insane this ship can be. But it's overall a really, really solid ship. I like the Republic a lot still. Yeah, Sierra Smolensk had a good one. And, uh, yeah, our low Yang, man. <laughs> Too easy, huh? Okay. Okay. Yeah, not bad, but not great. Overall, though, Republic's pretty awesome. The line is not particularly enjoyable, in my opinion. I would really only say it gets all right at Tier 9. Tier 10 is really the goal here. You're not really wanting to play the other ships. Or at least I'm not. I don't enjoy playing any of the other ships in the line other than Republic. But uh, that's just me. That's uh, that's my opinions. Let me know what you think of the Republic in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.